Good morning, uh, lecture four. Uh, the title is the Norman period, the 12th, the 13th centuries. First part, the Norman conquest. The Northmen, or the Vikings, who had settled in northwestern France, or Normandy, were called Normans. They had adopted the French civilization and language. In 1066, at the Battle of Hastings, the Norman Duke William defeated the Saxon king Harold and in five years uh, became complete master of the whole of England. He divided the land of the conquered people among his lords. With the Norman conquest, the feudal system was established in England. The English peasants were made to work for the Norman barons. They became their serfs and were oppressed. William the Conqueror couldn't speak a word in English. He and his barons spoke Norman French. Not pure French, because the Normans were simply the same Danes with a French Polish. The English language was neglected by the conquerors. Norman French became the official language of the state and remained, it, and remained as such up to the middle of the 14th century. It was the language of the ruling class, of the court and the law. It was spoken by the Norman nobility. But the common people of the native population kept speaking their uh, mother tongue, Anglo-Saxon, while at the monasteries, at the centers of learning, the clergy used Latin for services and the literary activities. In the Norman times, three languages were spoken in the country. Until the 12th century, it was mostly monks who were interested in books and learning. With the development of sciences, such as medicine and law, universities appeared in Europe. Paris became the center of higher education for English students. In 1168, a group of professors from Paris founded the first university at Oxford. In 1209, the second university was, yes, was formed at Cambridge. The students were taught Latin, theology, medicine, grammar, logic, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. By and by, the elements of French and Latin penetrated into Anglo-Saxon. They belonged to all spheres of life. What's denoting relations, religion, what's connected with government and military terms. War, peace, God, council, tower, wage, comfort, beef, tailor, all these words are of French origin. Sometimes the French words replaced the corresponding English words. Sometimes they remained side by side, forming synonyms. A well-known example of such differentiation is presented by the names of animals, which were of Anglo-Saxon origin, and the name of the meat uh, of these animals, which was French, such as ox, beef, calf, veal, sheep, mutton, it's my cat, etc. Enriched by French and Latin borrowings, the language still remained basically Anglo-Saxon. That was the first part of the lecture, and the second part of the lecture uh, is short. Literature in the Norman times. The Normans brought to England romances, love stories, and lyrical poems about their brave knights and their ladies. The first English romances were translations from French. 
But later on, in the 12th century, there appeared romances of Arthur, a legendary king of Britain. In the 15th century, Thomas Mallory collected and published them under the title Sir Thomas Mallory's Book of King Arthur and of his Noble Knights of the Round Table. The knights gathered in King Arthur's city of Camelot. Their meetings were held at a round table, hence the title of the book. All the knights were brave and gallant in their struggle against robbers, bad uh, kings and monsters. King Arthur was the wisest and most honest of them all. Then townsfolk expressed their uh, thoughts of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, thoughts in fables. Uh, these were funny stories about townsfolk and fables. Fables were short stories with animals for characters and contained a moral. Anglo-Saxon was spoken by the common people from the 5th till the 14th century. The songs and ballads about harvest, mowing, spinning and weaving uh, were created by the country folk and were learned by heart, uh, recited and sung accompanied by musical instrument and dancing. That's the end of the lecture.